Tell me about the impact of cold plunging and sauna and hot tubbing um, on, uh, on, on fertility for men. Okay, so the testis is outside the body. Yep. It's three degrees cooler than the rest of the body. So 95 versus 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And then there's a reason for that unknown. We had that conversation, don't really know why, but uh, it may be that it's an immunologic sanctuary and that's the only way to do it and that God or Darwin could figure out. But um, if you heat up the testicle, it's also close to the skin. So it's a radiator. So when the heat comes down the arterial blood, it has to cool. So it raises and lowers. And there was a journal in the, there was an article in the Journal of Irreproducible Results about 20 years ago. A man went to Big Sur and wore nothing and he measured ambient temperature and then he marked on his leg with a marker where his, his scrotum hung, how low it hung. And he could tell the ambient temperature by how high or low his scrotum hung. He became a thermometer. So, <laughs> so it does go up and down. <laughs> Is that Peter T. Alaric? Journal of Irreproducible Results. Oh, God. Really cool. But it showed that it's very temperature sensitive, right? And it goes up and down to regulate it closer to the body when you want it warmer, et cetera. You go into a cold shower or a plunge, where are your testicles? They're way up there. Right? In my abdomen. Yeah. And that's all the cremasteric muscle, and it's all temperature driven. So it spends all of its time regulating its temperature to stay at 95. Now, saunas, baths, hot tubs, jacuzzi, steam rooms change that, right? The worst one of those is anything underwater, submerging underwater, because you're one centimeter away, you're a liquid, it's a liquid, you're gonna turn that temperature, maybe not the inner part, inner part of your body, but little kids going into hot tubs, right? They overheat. So testicles will certainly overheat. So you get into a 105 degree hot tub, which is a very typical temperature for a hot tub is 105 to 110. You're saying within a relatively short period of time, your testes will assume that temperature. Absolutely. Yeah. You're 70% liquid. Yeah. And this is right at the surface. Published it in the Brazilian Journal of Urology. Very, I published 200 studies. This was the hardest one to get in. Everyone said, we know that it affects, it affects fertility. So I don't, we're not going to publish it. So Americans, I went to Brazilian Journal of Urology. It then went to the New York Times as a press release. So that's how popular it was. It's probably my most cited paper ever. And it's certainly not my best. It's very interesting. I took infertile men with low sperm counts and stopped the tubs. They were in hot baths because I used the word jacuzzi. Jacuzzi called me up and said, stop. Don't use that word. So I don't use that word. So hot baths or tubs. And I told them out and they went up 300%. Their semen, amount, semen quality went up 300%, total mold count in three months or four months and 600% in six months. So, you know, you have to give us some time. And that's that curve, right? The recovery curve. And we didn't look at fertility. We just looked at that recovery. And some in were zero and went up to close what to was normal. The age range of these men? 35. So fertile men. Yep. And Trying to conceive. Yeah. These are men who are not able to conceive. You're making the diagnosis. I think it's your hot tub. Let's get you out of there. And they have a six-fold increase in sperm count. Total motile sperm count, meaning count motility, mainly driven by motility. Interesting. Mainly so it's driven, motility that the price- The biggest one, but also count might have doubled, chili may have gone up threefold kind of thing. So six-fold increase overall. Then I calculated after that, I calculated a lethal dose of tubbing. Mm. So what's the lethal dose? Yeah, what's the LD50? Like? Yeah. So lethal dose to me means you're zero. Yep. You do it enough, you have no sperm. And it came out to be 20 minutes of a hot bath or tub, 20 minutes, 104 degrees, uh, three times a week would probably make you zero. Wow. There have to be a lot of guys out there who are spending at least three times 20 minute sessions in a hot tub that's at least 104 degrees yes. a week. And the highest group, the biggest, interesting, the largest group of people in tubs in Northern California, we did the study were environmental lawyers. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, is your job that stressful? It's like, yeah, it is. I mean, it probably is in California. All right. So then, then I think there's been studies that was the, I mean, the only study ever done prior to that was a PhD thesis at Vassar College where someone had a guy dip their testicles into a, a bucket for 20 minutes at really hot and looked at their sperm counts or their fertility and they went, they went, they really, that was the only, and I couldn't even find it, it wasn't published. I had to go, you know, to figure out this thesis thing, but that's how little was written about it. And they gave me so much flack for publishing this, it was really funny. And the New York Times had an article said, you know, I drew a, I drew a condom and it drew birth control pills and I drew a guy in a tub. It's like, pick your, pick your contraceptive. So 
it's huge. And it's, I asked it, I'd say 10% of my populations in it. And then the next question is, what about saunas? So saunas is not underwater, it's not submersion. But saunas are, you're in a, you're in a hot room, you, you, you're going to, it's going to affect it. And I would say the effect is one quarter to one third as profound as a hot bath or submersion. So my friend was absolutely right to have those ice packs on his scrotum. He think he's reading. Yeah. He's listening he's, he's to a smart guy. the Turek protocol. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would say steam rooms, showers are probably fine. Yep. Because you, you're in an ambient temperature is normal. And I think steam rooms are probably between saunas and, you know, it depends how much time you spend, but it's probably not normal, but not a hot bath. Hot baths are terrible. Okay. And then what about the cold? I don't worry about cold. I remember Surfer Magazine called me and said, um, sir, you know, I'm a Northern California surfer, right? Not an LA surfer. And they, they said, uh, sir, the editor of Surfer Magazine called me and said, are, are surfers from fertile? I'll let, I said, is that water bad for them? Because California water is yes, 60 freezing. degrees. Yeah. And I said, no, I've never met an infertile surfer. <laughs> so I don't think it's bad at all. All right. So the cold is okay. Especially plunge where you're talking seconds. Yeah. Yeah. You know, your testicles are going to go up yeah. and you're, you're going to be able to maintain that heat. I think if you did it all the time, it would probably be bad. Yeah. Because enzymes work in the testicle at that one temperature. They work optimally. I'm Peter Atia. This podcast relies exclusively on premium subscribers for support, which allows us to provide all our content without taking a single penny from advertisers. I believe this keeps my content honest, making it a trusted resource for listeners like you. As a premium member, you'll get immediate access to our entire back catalog of AMA episodes and all future AMA episodes. You'll get longevity-focused premium articles packed with actionable insights, You'll get unrivaled show notes for each and every episode of The Drive, every topic, every study, every resource from each episode carefully curated for you. You'll get quarterly podcast summaries where you'll learn my biggest personal takeaways from the previous 90 days of expert guest episodes and much more. This journey doesn't have to be navigated alone. We can take these steps towards a better, longer life together. Become a premium member today at peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe to join me in a shared commitment to a healthier future.